Hello, Leslie Nichols here with Vita Wellness Massage, V-I-T-A, wellnessmassage.com. And I had someone ask me uh, a little bit about what I think it takes to become a great massage therapist. So once you finish school, um, you've been practicing for a little while, what are um, a few different um, qualities that uh, it takes to um, build your practice, get people coming back in. And so I just wanted to make a few points. Um, the first, obviously, uh, your quality of touch. Most likely, if you're in the massage therapy business, um, you probably already have this. I'm just a uh, general statement. Most massage therapists um, do feel like they, they have a gift for this uh, and probably why you chose this career. And the modalities, uh, be it uh, cranial sacral therapy, Reiki, Lomi Lomi, Shiatsu, Ashiatsu, uh, all those other wonderful um, different types of massage out there, you'll, you'll fall into that. Um, so moving past those things, um, I think being able to welcome your guest in a warm, friendly way so that they don't feel rushed. Most people um, out in the world already do feel uh, rushed. Sometimes I forget this because I don't work in a office space. Um, so my environment is full of very relaxing music and candles and essential oils. So I feel that um, when people do come to see a massage therapist, you know, being able to immediately take them down a notch um, sets the, the mood for the type of massage that you want to give. Um, when you do have a client, it's really important when they're on the table that you shut your mouth, don't talk. <laughs> um, the client does not want to hear um, the bills you have to pay, any fights you're having, uh, any loved one that is sick or um, anything of that nature, okay? Someone is coming to see you so that you can massage them to help them feel better. So if they come to you and they've probably been looking forward to getting a massage because they know it's going to help them and relax them, and you stress them out by telling them uh, that you're you know, lactose intolerant and your kid's sick and they're going to shut off your electric bill and your dad's dying, no, you can't, you just, no, um, <laughs> can't do that. And uh, you have to leave that at the door. Um, before you go to work, all those terrible, horrible things that you might be dealing with, you need to um, find a way, and we can talk about it in a different video, to just separate that. You're going to work, and people might um, vent to you about all those things that are going on to where you can respectfully listen to them. You know, uh, but it is a client is not our therapist that we're complaining to. That's just, no, not going to do that. However, I know we have some clients that are awesome and we love talking to them. And usually for these clients, I'll schedule an extra 15 minutes before their massage so we can catch up and chit chat and talk about things because we just have that connection with some people, um, maybe with a handful of people. But I like to get the chit chat out of the way, especially if you haven't seen them in a month or two or six or a year. Um, and chit chat, that way when they get on the table, you can kind of guide them back to silence. Um, well, hello, Bailey. <laughs> um, where was I? Yes. Please don't get in the bag. Thank you. All right. Um, 
<laughs> you want to try and guide them back to silence. Um, I'm definitely guilty of being a chatty Kathy. Sometimes people are on the table. You're both having epiphanies. You're talking with your higher self. I, I get that. Um, I'm absolutely guilty. And I just make a mental note or I write it down on the client notes to shut up the next massage. Um, so it's not the end of the world, but if it's your first time client, um, it's probably a good idea not to introduce yourself by complaining. Um, so that is, I think, something that you really need to make sure that you don't do. Um, following up with a client is also really important, uh, especially the first, second visit, especially if you think that they've been in pain and you want to help them and you want to see if they were sore, did you, you know, help them in any way? When do they think they're going to come back in? Um, how many massages do you think it might take to help them get rid of their shooting pain? All that kind of conversation shows them that they know you know what you're talking about. And it also shows that you care. Uh, you can either call this person or send a card to this person. Um, and I think that in today's world that that means a lot. That they're not just a dollar sign but they're a person that you care about and you want to help them. And the last thing I'm going to mention in this video is just as much as it's important to connect with your client, it's also important to disconnect with your client when their session is over. Um, you can do this by thinking about their name or um, just their face, their presence, and just breathing three times. So just to separate yourself from them and the experience because you don't want to take on their energy. You don't want to take on their problems, their pain. Most massage therapists know what I'm talking about. So as important as it is to connect, make sure that you also disconnect. This is something that I don't do enough of, especially chair massage. Um, I'll be, you know, go through three, four people and I'm like, oh, I gotta <sighs> separate. Um, so, <laughs> um, but it does make a difference. It does make a difference. So even if uh, it's not something you think you need to do, just try it and see if that helps increase your energy, especially if you're feeling fatigued. Please uh, send me any, any questions you have uh, or suggestions because uh, I love being a massage therapist and I also love being able to offer um, my advice to um, new massage therapists, uh, my opinions based on my experience. So I'm happy to share it. So any questions you have, Leslie at VitaWellnessMassage.com. Bye.